The latest numbers show Tulsa County is admitting about 22 new patients a day into hospitals with COVID-19. The president is also rolling out a nationwide vaccine mandate that applies to organizations with 100 or more employees. And there's also more positive news to talk about as this Saturday will mark a big day for our city, 918 day. This morning we're speaking with Tulsa Mayor GT Bynum about all of that here in the next few minutes. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Let's talk first all about the president's mandate about the vaccines. This has really, you know, taken uh, a lot of people by surprise and certainly as the city of Tulsa, how is it going to uh, affect you guys? That is actually something we are trying to figure out um, because uh, the president is doing this through a federal agency called OSHA and OSHA regulates private employers, not public entities like uh, a city government like the city of Tulsa. So our, our legal department and our HR department are actually working on that, trying to determine if this even applies to us. I will say that uh, I had asked our team and, and local doctors probably about a month and a half ago if we should do this, not through a federal mandate, but just of our own accord, and was advised against it for two main reasons. Uh, one, uh, we already have uh, a limited supply of, of tests available locally, and, and we've seen here in the last month with seasonal uh, allergies kicking up a real strain on local testing supplies as people are, are concerned they might have COVID and, and, need, and need to get a test uh, and find out it's allergies, fortunately. The other issue that was brought to me uh, by those advising against doing this for us as a city government uh, was that it, it gives people a false sense of security if they're getting a test once a week and they think, well, I, I tested negative, so now I can just stroll around without a mask on and not socially distance and don't worry about getting vaccinated because I'm getting tested once a week, when all of those are wrong assumptions. The, the best way to end this is for people to get vaccinated uh, and to wear masks in crowded public places. And so that's what uh, we will continue uh, in unity with our local health care leadership to advocate for people. I, I think it's a very good, noble intent behind this uh, mandate, a desire to bring the pandemic to an end. But from a practical logistical standpoint, we've actually been advised against doing this locally. And have you heard from businesses here who it will almost undoubtedly apply to going through OSHA? Have you heard from the local business? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I've heard from a lot of local businesses who are concerned about this because, you know, the, the greatest challenge that local businesses are facing right now is finding employees. Um, I, I can't tell you a single major employer that I've talked with in the last six months who isn't feeling the strain of not being able to find employees. And you have something like this go in that can potentially make uh, or cause people to not want to work at an employer. And that's a real concern I'm hearing from a lot of businesses. So uh, again, you know, I think that it, it it's done with good intent, but there are a lot of unintended consequences that happen when you do a one size fits all nationwide federal mandate like this. We mentioned at the top 22 people admitted to the hospital every day in Tulsa County with COVID seven day rolling average. What are you hearing from hospital leaders, Mayor? Um, what I'm hearing is that our overall hospitalization levels have been remaining steady for the last two weeks or so. Uh, the good news in that is that it we haven't seen a spike that many folks were concerned we might see with school going back into session that the trade-off and the negative of that is that it's hovering right around 20 percent which if you look at where we were back in in june we we're around one percent and so it is remaining at a an unacceptably high level um, but it's also not on an upward trajectory it's kind of stabilized and plateaued at the level it's at right now uh, and so uh, we will just continue to encourage folks to get that vaccine. That is uh, the, the number that has not changed throughout all of this is that over 90% on any day of the people that are in our hospitals with COVID-19 are people who have not been vaccinated. Right. And the state has shown that the average cost of one of those stays to a person is over $80,000. So you can get a free vaccine and not end up or have your your odds of ending up in the hospital 
uh, almost entirely reduced and not have that cost because the vaccine is free or you can choose to roll the dice and end up as we we're seeing right now with a high number of people in our hospitals who haven't been vaccinated and and have best case scenario massive medical bills waiting for them when they get out and so that's why we just so strongly encourage people please just get the vaccine and avoid all of that want to talk real quick about this weekend 918 day you're going to be busy a lot of activities going on share with us about that I love 918 Day. You know, last year we had a little bit of a hiatus because of the pandemic, but we're coming back strong this year. Uh, this is our day. You know, 918 is our, our area code. And so we picked September 18th a few years ago as a day to celebrate all the things that we love about Tulsa. Uh, we've had over 500 people sign up for the 918 Day scavenger hunt that'll kick off on Saturday morning. And there are events scheduled throughout the day. This year, we're really trying to highlight our parks that we have here in Tulsa. We have uh, actually one of the highest uh, numbers of acres of parkland per person of any major city in America right here in Tulsa. It's a great asset for us. And I'm looking forward to seeing the way all of our local businesses and organizations celebrate the city that we love on September 18th, 918 Day. Mayor Bynum, thank you so much.